identify what you know what true worship is all if Mary, if, if this person, this woman was here today, those are the kinds of songs that she would be worshiping, that she would be using to worship Jesus. Amen. I want to be with you. I want to be filled with your spirit. There's freedom. There's freedom where the spirit is. You know, why did Jesus so highly exalt in this woman? Because at the end of uh, Mark, uh, verse 9, uh, this, this story of this, this wonderful woman, uh, Jesus said, uh, I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will, be, will also be told in memory of her. That's, that's a, a great uh, affirmation, exaltation, appreciation. I mean, this is something... That you know, that is really special for this woman. What 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 made Jesus applaud what she did? You know, we look at this story uh, in the four gospels. There are, there's actually four accounts of this of this story. You look, you, you find this in Mark chapter 26, and also in John chapter 12, and also in Luke chapter 7. There are three different accounts. Well, actually, if you if you look at the four gospels, there are four different accounts. And, and many Bible uh, teachers say that the one in Luke chapter 7 is different from uh, the one from Mark chapter 14, John chapter 12, and Matthew chapter 26. Uh, the other gospels, except Mark, you know, they have the same uh, woman in their story. Because the one in Luke chapter 7 uh, took place in the house of Simon the Pharisee. Here, it took place in the house of Simon the leper. Pharisees don't want to be with lepers, as we all know that. And the woman in Luke chapter 7 uh, was a sinful woman, as, as uh, uh, Luke uh, uh, narrated the story. But in Mark chapter 14, this is Mary of Bethany, the sister of Lazarus and Martha. She was just an ordinary woman. So ordinary per, uh, woman, nothing special about her. She did not write a best-selling book. I mean, she did not have a worldwide ministry, but she did this one act of worship. It was a very lavish, special kind of worship, unembarrassed kind of worship. You know, during those days, women are not supposed to do this. Uh, they're not supposed to be seen in public doing this and, and they are opening themselves to uh, criticism and hostility and ri ri ridicule from, uh, from the men as you see from the story. The disciples were criticizing her. What, what waste is this? This perfume could have been sold and the money used to, to give to the poor. Not that they really cared for the poor because if you look at the other uh, narrations in the gospel, he was, you know, they, uh, Judas was the, uh, the money keeper and he had other agenda in mind. And the story says that this alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, the woman broke it and uh, applied this on, on the feet and head of Jesus. And it, 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 it cost her a lot because, you know, it, it's, it's worth uh, a common laborer's wages for a year. How much do you make for a year? What's your annual pay? I mean, if you're just uh, uh, using the average pay, about seven, $7.50, if you multiply that, you know, eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, uh, for one year, that would be about over $15,000. I mean, that's, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. But, you know, she never really thought about, you know, about how much she's got to give to the Lord and, and how much this uh, perfume cost. Uh, she just wanted to express her love and adoration and worship to Jesus. And that really caught the attention of Jesus and that's why Jesus so highly exalted her and, and Jesus said whenever this uh, gospel of the kingdom shall be preached it will be preached in memory of what she has done you know there are three instances in the gospels where you will find Mary of Bethany one in John chapter 12 one in 
in John chapter 11. And then the other one is in Luke chapter 10. Every time you see Mary of Bethany, every time you read about her, she's always sitting at the feet of Jesus. Yes. She's always sitting at the feet of Jesus. She just loves Jesus. She just wants to worship. She just wants to learn from Him. She just wants to drink from the fountain of life, the living water. I mean, she's so hungry and thirsty for Jesus that she just wants to be with Him at all times. And this is what this worship is all about. We just want to sit at the feet of Jesus and express our worship and adoration and gratitude for what God has done for us. He's forgiven us. He's given us eternal life. He's given us this blessed living hope. And we cannot help it but just express our worship with all of our strength, with all of our soul, with all of our mind. And this is what exactly Mary did. And the, this is the last one I want to bring home to. There's more to this story. But I just want to share this to you. There was something that Mary saw that the disciples were not aware about. See, the disciples' mind were still filled with, with earthly things, material things. And here, here was Jesus. I mean, he was about ready to be crucified. He was about ready to face the cross about a week after this event. And none of the disciples even took the time to anoint him because it was, uh, it was uh, it, a part of their tradition. It was customary for them before a person uh, needed to be buried. I mean, this, per this, this person needed to be anointed first. And Mary saw that the, the significance of that and she took the chance while well, she had it she took the chance because she knew Mary knew that a few days later she will not, never have the chance again to, to have this opportunity to anoint Jesus she knew something the disciples did not know because she was sitting at the feet of Jesus she was listening to the spirit of God as the Spirit of God was talking to her spirit that she needed to do this. In Mark chapter 16, if you look at the first day of the resurrection, when Jesus rose again from the dead, there were three women that went to the tomb, and they wanted to anoint Jesus. You know, Mary of Bethany was not one of them. It was only Mary, the mother of Jesus, Mary Magdalene, and Salome. Those are the three women. Why was Mary of Bethany not there? Because she already did her job while Jesus was still alive. She anointed Jesus right here. Wow. See, brothers and sisters, tonight we have this wonderful opportunity to worship. Thank God that you showed up. Turn to your neighbor and tell them. Turn to someone next to you, to your left and to your right. Tell them, thank you for coming. your girlfriends, your, your brothers and sisters may be saying, why would you go there on a Saturday night? We have worship tomorrow. You know what Jesus is going to say? Jesus, this is what Jesus is going to say. Live her alone.